Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 43. 43. Is that right? Okay. Yes. We do that every week, and I'm like, oh, I got this. I can barely bend my fingers sometimes. Yeah, okay. So Especially we'll, this we'll rely one. on mine. Ow. Hey, if you've got tech questions about your home voiceover studio, whether it be software or equipment or how you use it, because I think that's a little more important, uh, throw them in the chat room right now on Facebook or uh, if you're watching on YouTube, because we'd love to answer your questions about your home voiceover studio. That's why we're here. So, but we've also got your tech update, and you've got some really cool stuff to talk about tonight, like? Well, I thought I'd maybe chat a little bit about, well, how impressed I was with VO North's production. Yeah. That was really well done, the way they did it remotely. Um, new interface that's been pretty exciting lately, a lot of us have been talking about, avoiding Apollo and Windows, maybe a smart case for using LED, LED uh, smart light bulbs, and a couple other little things. Cool. All that and your questions and a discussion on RX8 and other fixing programs on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 43 coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now, George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hey there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS e Tech, Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Yes. Every week, Mr. Whitham and I are here to discuss what goes on in behind, inside your booth and inside your computer. Because without a good place to record and without a computer, you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> I guess. Yes, that's, that's right. <laughs> it's kind of really the way it works. Uh, Everybody but, came here to get that piece of important information. Just in case you were, in case you were wondering. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's important to let you know that one of the reasons we do voiceover body shop is to help you guys understand that there's a lot to it, but don't overthink it because George and I have been thinking about this for, when did you start really working with people in home studios? I think it was, uh, an earnest for my own business was about 2005. The same here when people suddenly yeah. had to have home studios yeah, uh, because, they could. Uh, so you're looking at 15 years from me and 15 years. There's 30 years combined experience. Combined professional experience. Professional experience at how to do this properly. And we like to come on here and say, look, it's time for you to really understand this. We're the guys you got to come to. You've got to talk to professionals because you can go on Facebook. And a lot of you are watching on Facebook right now. 
Uh, but if you go into some of the tech columns or, you know, or in, in the, uh, the, the, the billboards and the whatever, whatever, chat, all, the chat, the rooms, chat rooms, all that stuff, rooms. you are going to get so much misinformation and conflicting information. And, and we love it when somebody will say to us, well, so-and-so said this and it's not you. Uh, well, like, a lot of times they just say, literally, somebody told me. Yeah. Somebody did. Or could, could you be I heard somebody? that or <laughs> any one of those versions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we only get that like six or seven times a day each. Uh, and uh, But really, go with the guys that actually know what's going on inside your home studio, because every home studio is different. Every voice is different. Every room is different. And every studio really needs to be individually crafted to work for you. And that's because we know what it's supposed to sound like. I mean, what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. 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 And uh, there's a way it's supposed to sound. We know what it is. And if we say it's good... Yeah, it probably is. All right. So if you want to work with us, you can work with either one of us. If you want to work with George, where do they go? They go to... My website is working, thanks to a guy I'm going to mention in a little bit, georgethe.tech. Uh, you can go to georgethetech.com as well if that confuses you. Um, <laughs> both of them work. And there's all sorts of services on there. You can look through my service menu, which is quite long. Um, and if you look on there and you start glazing over, send us a message. We'll point it in the right direction. So what service you might want to check out. And uh, Dan, you know, we do a sound check, but Dan, well, he has his specimen cup. That's true. If you go to where home, do you find the specimen cup? Well, you go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. There it is right there. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there's a specimen collection cup, the Home Studio Masters Specimen Collection Cup. Click on that. It's a Dropbox. Send me an MP3 of your raw audio. See, people are like, well, I want to show you all the processing I do. And I'm like, no, I don't want to hear the processing you're doing. You know, I mean, I might want to hear it. And then I'll go stop using that. Uh, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. Uh, but That's I, what the engineer is going to tell you when you send the audio with processing on it. Like, don't do that. that. Yeah, Just because you have something doesn't mean you should use it, especially if you don't know how or what it's supposed to sound like. But uh, for $25, I'll analyze your audio, and we'll see if it's up to snuff, if it's almost snuffy, if that such a concept exists. And, uh, and if you need to make some improvements, how we can do that, and we can arrange that as well. So uh, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. But right now, it's time to get into the meat of what you and I talk about every week, which is shop, uh, <laughs> which <laughs> people love to hear, and they all listen in. And, I mean, I mean, 2,500 people watched Tech Talk last week. Amazing. So Must be we know you're listening. We know you're watching. Must be a reason. And let's get into that. So what's your tech update for this week, Mr. Whittem? Well, first, I just want to mention uh, last week or so, there was uh, the VO North conference. Yeah. Um, I was a part of it this year, and it was 100% virtual this year, as pretty much everything is in life. And uh, they did it all over Zoom. And I have to say, they made a really impressive use of not only the technology, but just they ran it really, really well. I was just, I was impressed. And I, what was interesting is they had already booked a hotel, which I think they were probably committed to. And rather than just say, well, let's, let's just all work from home. They still had their hotel location. They still had their staff there masked and socially distanced. And they ran all the Zoom breakouts for all the different things that were going on. And sometimes there were four uh, different classes going on at the same time or talks and they managed all of it from that hotel and it was just it was seamlessly run it was really impressive i gotta t take my hat off to uh tanya and dervla that that run that conference yeah. just brilliant yeah zoom really works great for breakouts you know the oh we would have like a social hour we had a happy yeah. hour 100 plus people in one zoom room right useless we're really having any conversation <laughs> not going to meet people that way yeah no but she would do a she would have a randomized breakout and then boom, five of us would just appear in a little room and we oh, yeah. had a moment to chat and get to know each other and it was super cool yeah bravo um 
in terms of gear, I don't have one in my hot little hands. Got to work on that. You guys have heard us talk about uh, many different audio interfaces, and we really do believe all in all, the quality of audio interfaces available these days has pretty much essentially peaked. I mean, they, they all sound really good. So why another one? Well, there's this company called Solid State Logic. Maybe you know of them as SSL. Maybe, maybe you've seen one of their mixing consoles in one of the venerable top-end studios in the world. Some giant, huge desk with a million buttons and switches and lights. Anyway, they decided we needed to throw our hat into the ring and sell an audio interface that competes with all the other companies in that same kind of vein. So a desktop unit that uh, is uh, affordable but sounds great. And so... There is now the SSL2. And you know what? Where I've been recommending this a lot is folks that stumbled into buying an Apollo who are on Windows. Oh. And that's where I get into the oh. why you should still avoid using Apollo on Windows. So whatever, every time I start an Apollo setup on Windows and I'm on Zoom and they're on Zoom, the first thing I do is screw everything up by going into their Adobe Audition settings, and it always seems to be Adobe, and change the sound driver to the correct one, which is always should be ASIO. The second you do it, Zoom's audio goes away, and now we can't communicate. And that happens every dang time, and it's a big pain in the neck. And that's kind of the theme of the theme of using the Apollo on Windows, frankly you using windows for a lot of audio stuff, but it just is really a pain in the neck. It's the drivers aren't that great. It's overly complex and has features that most of you just don't need. So if you're looking for something that, you yeah, know, I've got some money here. I don't want to buy just another focus, right? Scarlet. Then check out the SSL too. Cause it's, it's a great piece of hardware. It's built well, looks professional. Um, it's USB-C, which uh, means that it's going to have a very reliable and fast connection. It also means it's powered over the USB cable. So if you're using it portably, you don't have to carry a, a wall wart. And lastly, it sounds really good, as you would expect it to. And so I, I, this has been one I've now, just even today, because that's why this came up. I had someone who had just bought their Apollo. I said... You know what? This is going to be a, I got to be honest, this is going to be a re relatively painless or painful, painful uh, yeah. relationship for the foreseeable future. Go return the Apollo, go get the SSL2. And it makes it an easy sell because the Apollo at 500 makes the SSL, SSL2 seem like a massive bargain at like $230 US. And it does so, the same thing. It does the same thing. Like, the, again, the, the bells and whistles of the Apollo get in your way like crazy yeah and if this if you're like getting into voiceover you do not need more distractions more troubleshooting and more features yeah you need reliable and good sounding yeah i mean so. people, you know a lot of engineers when somebody says well, what's a good interface they say well the apollo twin's a good interface they just fail to follow up with but if you're just starting out in voiceover and know nothing about audio production Maybe it's not the one for you, but that one apparently gets lost in a lot of the conversation. It's kind of the new Pro Tools. Yeah. I mean, it's apples and oranges because Apollo is not a Pro Tools. It's an audio interface. But it is like that thing where it's like you just get Pro Tools. Everybody says use Pro Tools. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I use. I use Pro Tools. Well, I'm a professional. No. Yeah. Do not buy it just because somebody that so. happens to have one or whatever says to buy one. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, that's my point on that. So moving on. LED smart bulbs. I bought some. They were super, super cheap. These are the ones that like change color and, and yeah, two of them for seventeen dollars. Whoa! And this the thing that that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. These are these are Wi-Fi smart device. These are Wi-Fi devices. They're actually they actually are set up over your Wi-Fi network and they talk to your router. Now, what are, I will what say, are they saying though? I hope they're not I'll say caveat. Be careful with these things. <laughs> These are what we call IoT devices, Internet of Things, and they're sometimes notorious for being hacked and turning into tiny little servers in your network. So be careful. This is a computer inside a wall light bulb. That's what these things are. They're probably most famous, made, made, made famous by Philips. They have the Hue light bulbs. 
No. This is just a very inexpensive Hue light bulb. Why am I talking about one of these? Well, a little while ago, I thought of the idea. Now, now Harlan Hogan has their the on-the-air sign, which is cool. It's got lights. It's got a remote. It's great. However, if you wanted to have 17 of those signs, or it was, say you have a big house, <laughs> and you want to tell everybody in the house, ah. hey, I'm recording... STFU, man. <laughs> I'm recording. <laughs> Dad's making money. Shut up. <laughs> you can buy a couple boxes of these and change out one light bulb in each of the kids' rooms and in the kitchen and wherever else you need it. Change out one of them with one of these. And now you can, through the app, change every one of those light bulbs at a tap of a app screen on your phone or whatever to a, a certain color. So... You could just have them all turn blue. That's what my buddy Rick Wasserman does. I would probably use red because I think of red as recording. Whatever it is, you can change a whole bunch of light bulbs in the house to red. Boy, that's so that's, code... that's one way to really tick off the rest of your family. <laughs> <laughs> you may not want to change the actual lights in the ceiling. Just saying you could if you wanted to, but some people, have I give them the idea. They're like, maybe I'll just get a dedicated little lamp with this light bulb in it. I'm like, maybe a better idea. Anyway. Yeah, that's what that's why I got them, and I'm going to experiment with them a little bit myself. Yeah, I wanted to give a quick plug and a huge hug virtually to <laughs> Brad Newman of Upper Level CRM. Now he he is developing a CRM, but also is a domain host and a web host. And um, I had a major problem with my website George dot Tech. The server was working at Squarespace, but the domain stopped talking to the server. It took a week of futzing around, never really got it working, and I was pulling my hair out. People could not find my website. It was a bad scene. And then I remembered Brad Newman. And he, in like an in very little notice time, had that domain fixed. Had both of my domains working correctly. Not a workaround, but working the way designed, working correctly. And a whole bunch of other stuff I threw in his lap. Oh, if, since you could do this, can you do that? His answer was just yes, yes, yes. And he fixed a lot of stuff very quickly. So a huge plug to Brad Newman at Brad, Brad at UpperLevelCRM.com. Amazing resource for people with web issues or wanting a solid web host for your website. Um, thank you, Brad. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Good guy. Good, good guy. He's super knowledgeable. A little hyper, but very knowledgeable. <laughs> <knows> his um <laughs> <laughs> um, the ultimate internet router question mark. Don't you hate those YouTube thumbnails that always end in a question mark? Well, this is, I mean, I honestly don't know if it's the ultimate internet router because I haven't plugged it in yet. And we'll, figured we'll find it, but, out next week then, won't we? But if I'm on the internet <laughs> show and that must mean it's working, this is a Synology router. Now Synology is known really for their disc stations. They make these seriously awesome hard drives that for your network where you can have one, two, five, or more hard disks connected to your network. You could use it to serve your entire, fam entire family's music collection, movie collection, back up all your data. I don't know, be like a video game server. Who knows? It can, it can do a lot of stuff. This is a router that takes over your, the duty of the router that you're renting from your internet provider, which is what, that's why I bought it. I don't want to rent it from them. That also acts as a server. So it has a hard drive port in the back. I don't think this is that unusual anymore. I think a lot of the routers do this. But the thing about the Synology is it really is at it really works like a real actual server. So the software on this thing or the firmware is extremely well done, very well thought out, it really powerful. And um it's just a pretty remarkable piece of gear. It also has another interesting feature, and you'll notice it has the WAN port you're familiar with. That's yep. your that's the one that goes to your modem. And over here, which you probably can't see, the first LAN port says WAN 2. Wow, what does that mean? That means you can have two modems. Oh. If you can get them to do it, now this is the hard part, you could have a Spectrum cable modem and you could have a DSL modem. And DSL is pretty cheap these days. Why the heck would you do that? Why would you Well, with a router like this, you can have a fail safe. So if your cable modem goes down, they're known for doing this sometimes, it will fail over to your DSL modem. 
or you can even get a 4G hotspot, like an LTE hotspot, and have that be connected as a fail safe. So you really have an incredibly reliable network if you have something like this. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try and hooking it up. Yeah. $200, competitive with all the other really high-end routers that are out there, but should be pretty cool. Yeah. Now we've got a Synology in our studio here. We do. Actually, yes. We have the little brother to this one. And this time I went for the big brother. And this is the called the RT2600AC. So if you're looking for the model, that's that one down. what it's called. And it looks like a face crab, like all the other ones. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> lastly, uh, if you're using Zoom, if you're, I think this is a Mac thing only, but Windows people, please answer this in the chat or in the comments below. There's a Zoom mode called Music Mode. And I'm using it tonight. So if you think my audio sounds more hi-fi than usual, let me know if you notice because uh, I'm using it right now. It means that your Zoom audio connection should have no audio compounding, compression, noise reduction, any of that garbage. I was going to comment that you sound like Johnny Mathis. It's uh... <laughs> Really? <laughs> well, it should be high, high quality. And uh, so I'm experimenting with that tonight. Maybe give that a try on your next Zoom session and see how it works out well for you. But that's music mode. You have to turn it on in advanced audio settings and then turn, put your computer in original sound mode. A little bit of digging around, you'll find it, but uh, give it a shot. Anyway, I've talked long enough. Let's talk about fixing programs. Yeah. Fix your stuff, fix your sound quality. Yeah. Now here, here's the thing, because you, know, you and I get emails all the time, all day, uh, you know, people are sending the audio specimens and they're like, well, I've got this and I've got RX-7 or I got RX-8 from, from Isotope, which are mm -hmm. great programs. Yeah. But it seems to me that people are, you know, they hear that this is a great program to try and fix their audio. And they're what are you fixing anyway? <laughs> I mean, if, if it needs fixing, I mean, my philosophy is always do whatever you can physically to get your sound right. That means getting as sound tight a room as possible and making sure that the reverberation in the room is is really is really deadened uh, and that you're using proper microphone technique. So if you do all those things right, you really shouldn't have to fix it. Now, a lot of people say, well, I use it to get rid of mouth clicks. Well, if you got mm -hmm. mouth clicks, that generally has more to do with microphone technique than it does with you know, anything else. I mean, like, well, you can use Granny Smith apples or my favorite thing, alcohol. If you, you, you have that sort of one here, one there. Remember, the idea of your home voiceover studio, and we see this all the time, is not to make you sound great. It's to make you sound like you. And when we talk to other people, you know, and we see all the specs saying conversational or like the guy next door you'd want to have a beer with. That means talking naturally. And, you know, if you got a little bit of spittle in there, that's going to be there. If you're trying to take, if it's like constant, well, you know, then, then we need to look at your microphone technique or we need to look at, uh, you know, why it is that that's happening and try and solve it physically so you're not relying on technology. Now, what is RX-8? It's, you know, it's got a real advanced a spectrogram and a suite of tools. But yeah. what was it really designed for? It really was not designed for voiceover. And I think people are probably abusing it and probably more ruining their audio than helping it. What, what, did you, what experiences yeah. have you had with it? Well, I mean, I'm getting a lot of clients who, who bought it because it was on a deal or it was recommended to them because everybody else is using it. And so what it tends to happen is people use, use a tool because they bought it. And so they feel like, well, I should use it on everything. Um, and then they end up throwing it into a template or a rack or a stack, or it becomes part of their production sequence. Their it's workflow. always there. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? You know, you don't realize how much that thing, that tool is actually reducing the sound quality and it's in the process. And uh, I hate to tell you that RX-7 and RX-8 you know, I haven't heard anything that makes the RX-8 magic about it. It doesn't sound better. I don't think there's any algorithms in RX-8 for noise reduction or the mouth declicking 
that are improving over, over, over RX7. So if you already have RX7, you're probably fine. There's new features in RX8, new tools in the suite, but nothing that really seems to matter for voice actors. Um, but yeah, I mean, I understand. Some people, it's just, they have to turn out a lot of audio. They've tried what, they think they've tried everything and they fall back on mouth clicking And for some people, it is a massive time saver. But yeah, do not make it like, well, this is just part of my signal chain, like a mic preamp. Oh no, 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 no. Know when it's time to use it and make sure it's been set up correctly because it can really degrade sound quality. And uh, yeah, it can be pretty bad sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm always hearing, you know, I mean, and you know, I see this in specs all the time. It's like no announcers or they'll say, you've got to have, you know, a, a broadcast quality studio. Well, we've no talked USB about- No USB mics. Yeah, no USB mics, stuff like that. Can RX-8 or some other types of programs, can they fix that? You know, it's like trying to take a, an eraser on a chalkboard and being really accurate around the letters, trying to, so you just see the letters and not see. Yeah. And, and, you That's know- That's a good uh, analogy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it. if you've got to do that, look for the physical. Every time I work with somebody and we solve the physical problems, it increases your workflow and your time, you know, you know, recording to getting it out ratio much faster because there's less to correct. And if you rely on this technology to do all this stuff, then really you're, you're, I, I call it intellectual dishonesty because it's not really you because we don't talk to other people conversationally with all these processes going on, you know? So why do that? You want to sound as natural as possible. I believe that what Isotope really wants with that program and what it was really designed for was for fixing vinyl records. I think that you're maybe vinyl digitizing. Records, uh, yeah. People having to edit a video and the audio that was provided with the video production oh, yeah. is way second rate, which yeah. happens a lot. Can you fix this audio for me? I can fix it because I know how. <laughs> you know. How many times do we get that? Who the yeah. heck recorded this? <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it was really there. If it, it can rescue an interview for a video, but it right. voiceover is supposed to be a nice, clean, dry sound, and RX seven is really like you know mixing some stuff into it that you really don't want to use. And I'm sure there are guys out there that are like, oh no, I use it all the time. It's great. Fine. Just because yeah. you got something doesn't mean you got to use it. Well, if you've been using it for like six months, yeah, just one day, just turn it off or disable it in your production flow, whatever it is, and listen to the audio without it. You might be surprised. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, <laughs> we got lots of questions from our awesome. amazing audience out there. If you've got a question, throw it in the Facebook chat room. Jeff Holman is sitting in there, just going, "Oh, there's one." And, copying it down, making sure that we get it, and then we answer it here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So stay tuned for that. Coming up, your questions. In a world of voices, one place wasn't VO Buzz Weekly. VoiceOver Body Shop, the better one. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where we get to talk about our fantastic, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. At this point, you have to know what Source Connect is. My gosh, all the agents are nagging you to get it. Um, even if you don't have an agent, maybe consider having it ready to go so when you're asked for it, you can say yes. And what does that mean? You go to source-elements.com, 
get a 15 day free trial, but you can even wait to activate your trial. You can sign up, get your account going, get your iLock account set up, have all the pieces in place, and then wait to activate your 15 day free trial to make sure that it doesn't expire by the time you need it. But it gets better than that. If you have had your 15 day free trial and you let it expire, don't worry. There's now two day passes. So you can activate your Source Connect for just that gig and just basically pay for the time you actually need. So you really can't go wrong. There's no major commitments anymore, no subscriptions. If you don't want to go that route, you do have that ability to just activate it and use it for a day or two. So it's a no brainer. Be ready to use Source Connect for that big gig that comes down the line which is happening more and more these days, thanks to working remotely. And sign up at source-elements. And if you have a chance to tell them we sent you, would you do that? That'd be awesome. I'll be right back right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop, Tech Talk number 43. Now, here's something I, I'll bet you guys don't realize that generally, you know, people send in these questions, we answer these off the cuff. It's not we like do. we prepped for them. I mean, these were not here uh, twenty or about an hour ago. There yeah. was no questions yeah. here. So I haven't, I haven't seen these, and you haven't seen right. these. You know, they've been sitting in a in a, in a mayonnaise jar out on my porch here, um, <laughs> sealed up, so we we can't read them. So uh, let's get to those questions right now. Uh, All right. Well, the first one is from our very own chat mod, which, you know, as the as our moderator, Dan, he gets room, priority. He, yeah. he gets priority, of course, um, in order to from Jeff Holman, that is in order to connect a Focusrite Scarlett Solo to the new MacBook Pro, which has only Thunderbolt inputs. Actually, they're USB-C yeah. slash Thunderbolt ports, Thunderbolt three ports. A USB to Thunderbolt converter adapter thing has to be used. In fact, every device will need one, including monitors, Ethernet, external hard drives, blah, 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 wired mice and keyboards. Have you noticed any problems with these connectors and converters? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm finding out. <laughs> some of them are going to be really crap, right? And that's the problem. And, and none of them, they all have one thing in common. None of them are made by Apple. Which to me is insane. I, yeah. I mean, Apple is the dongle company. They make tons of money selling adapters for this and that and expensive cables. Why the hell doesn't Apple make their own hub? USB-C hub. I have no freaking idea. They just so we end up buying it. them from other companies. And so I, I go on Amazon and I search and sort by customer review and, you know, hope I get some brand, funky brand off off the web that isn't garbage. I did put one on my own George the Tech site. I have a section called homevostudionow.com, which is all for gear gears that gear stuff that I've recommended. And I put one on there. It was like 40-ish dollars. And I bought one. Seems to be fine. Um, you know, but anytime you have a hub, it's a, it's a weak link. So you just you just have to maybe buy two. Because if that, if that thing's running your whole studio, everything literally goes through that one cable, it's a pretty important link. And uh, at 40 bucks by two. Yeah. I've um, got an i5 on mine. 
that has mm-hmm. a whole bunch of, you know, adapter, you know, and it's got, you know, it's one USB-C plug and it goes into right. my Mac mini and yeah. I've had no problems with it. It's, you know, I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it was, I think it was like yeah, about 40 bucks, something like that. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. I, I have a Thunderbolt 3 dock or hub plugged into my Mac mini. That was $300. So mm-hmm. they're a lot more Jeez. expensive. And it doesn't even provide any USB. Price. Well, it doesn't even provide any USB C ports. It has USB 3 ports and it has one extra Thunderbolt port. It's actually a little disappointing on the port side of things. I, I, I mean, on this Mac Mini, I have Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapters plugged into it. Yeah. I have a Thunderbolt 3 dock also plugged into it. And then I have a USB C or what is it? A USB, I'm losing track. A USB 3 hub also plugged in. It's insane. All the crap I have to plug in to get all the stuff I want to have hooked up. It's it's berserk, but just buy two of them. Have a spare. There you go. You don't want your studio to go down. All right. Uh, Jim McNicholas has a question for you. I don't know why he's not asking me either, but maybe because I don't know about these guys. Uh, it says, I'm torn between two 416 substitutes as I don't have $1,000. The Deity S Mic 2 or the Synchro Mic D2? Are you familiar with those particular products? Yep. A couple more very inexpensive Chinese made uh, shotgun mics, and they're both decent mics. Um, I, I would ask it what your budget really is, because if your budget, if you can push your budget closer to 500 I think I'm on the ultimate $500 shotgun mic, and that's the Rode NTG5. That's what I'm speaking into now. And it is fan-freaking-tastic. End of story. Awesome. $500. If you can't quite push your budget to $500, um, I would still stick with some of the much better branded products from, like, Rode that are going to have really good warranties and a long track record. The Rode NTG4. I also have, in fact, there's one right here. Looks a lot like a 416, obviously. Pretty dang good. Not quite as incredibly sizzly and amazing as the NTG5, but also really good. But yeah, those other ones, you know, they're good, but they're not great. I've heard them a lot, and they're a little bit noisy and kind of dull and flat sounding. They definitely definitely do not sound like a 416 at all and to my ears so if you're trying to buy one to 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 step in as a 416 and sound like a 416 yeah they don't really sound like 416 they they don't the the road ntg5 is pretty dang close to a 416 really close so um or go get a used 416 you can get a 25 year old 416 sounds for the same. probably 400 bucks Something like that. Don't you have to shove a battery in that one, though? Some of them took batteries. Some of them you need a, a P48 to T12 T a power adapter. Doesn't matter. A good quality professional mic like a Sennheiser made in Germany, that thing's going to last for many, many, many years. And you'll, at that same price area, three to $400 range, if you look hard enough, you're going to have a real Sennheiser 416 or even a 415 which was its predecessor. Right. So yeah, I'd, I'd still pick one of those over one of those other ones. Yeah. I mean, those those things were built to be, you know, to hammer nails because, you know, for, for roadies and road They're crews. Using the field. Are, yeah. I mean, it was made for field recording. And, you know, now use. I use a 416 because I can. Um, but that was after many years of, you know, I had the TLM 103 and I had a bunch of other mics. You know, I tried the the, the, the baby bottle for a while. But I stuck with the 416. Why? Because it's it's the pickup pattern on it that just seems to be right for voiceover because it's there for really picking up the human voice from a conversational distance, not from, from close proximity. And I mm. think that's really why the 416 works so well and why you see it in all these studios. Can you approximate that with, with you know, with knockoffs of it or something that is marketed to be like a 416? There's nothing like a 416, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Yeah, plus, I mean, nowadays, if they literally are asking you what mic you have, because that's happening a lot now. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to have the real freaking thing. Right. They just want to see the brand. And right. And it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's, if it sounds good, it is good. 
sometimes they want to see the brand name Mike. You just have to have that thing because that's what they want. That's so. right. Yeah. Um, okay. Nicholas, Nicholas Clements. Clements. Go for it. Uh, I recently upgraded my $35 USB mic. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, Were you working with that $35 Good USB? for you, yeah. yeah. Uh, to a Rode NT1 with a Rode AT1. I think that's actually the AI one. one. AI one, yeah. Yeah, I have one of those too. We tested that, Dan. It's great. It was great. Um, it's great. And in my first chance to mix my levels, I uh, had zero idea what I was doing. Not a good thing. It was too low. <laughs> So he's saying mix my levels. I'm not sure what that means. I think you set, set your levels. levels. Setting your levels. Um, using Audacity, I used the amplify effect, and I ended up with zero headroom, meaning I guess he, he brought the levels up past clipping. Yeah. Uh, my question is, what's the difference between amplify and normalization, ah. and how much headroom should I leave when using both of these effects? If any. Dan, you want to talk about the difference between amplify and normalization? Yeah, amplify is taking the level of the entire file and and raising it up as much as you want normalization is setting it the hottest peak to a specific level which you know standard is always minus three the thing is is you should never rely on those tools to get the proper level usually if you're not getting a hot enough level it's because something is choking it how many times george is it because somebody has a mic or a an interface with a 10 db pad on it yeah that happens and, i, I mean those. i i see yeah. it all the time and I, i'm like why is that happen? oh you got a 10 db pad and they're always like you were right yeah that th you were choking the signal and right. the idea is is if you can set the levels right and using an interface for voiceover now remember if you're singing you're using a lot more of what we call spl sound pressure levels because you're singing and projecting and yeah. projecting and you the the interface and the preamp doesn't need to apply as much gain but when you're talking voiceover and you're talking conversationally you've got to it the interface the preamp interface slash interface has to have more drive to it to get those levels still with any one of the the interfaces that we see you should be able to get enough gain, especially with you know an AI one, which we thought was sure. tons of gain on it, and and Plenty with an and the road uh, mics had traditionally have lower output but very little self noise, so you can really crank these things and get the levels that you want from it. I think people are just not accustomed to never having had this kind of equipment. They're not accustomed to how far the gain should be actually turned up to. Right. Like, so they may start at like just sort of 12 o'clock right. halfway and it's really low. So don't be afraid to push the gain. Right. Turn it up until you get those those better levels. You should be peaking at at least minus 6 dB yeah. on your meter. Yeah. And consistently to, uh, you know, at least minus 9 and then really, as you were saying, peaking to minus 6 or Once between minus 6 and minus 4. But, yeah. you know, use the meter because it's going to give you green and yellow and red. And you always yeah. want to be in the green and you want to be consistently in the yellow with an occasional flash of red. If you're not seeing that, then you're not loud enough. Yeah. All right. Leachy. I'm 35 years old. I'm a, I'm a 35 year old man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to read that one. Uh, okay, never mind. Why the hell is that in there? Okay. Yeah. For you on crack. Why did you put that in there? <laughs> Maybe you just want to make us laugh. I, I, he anyway, um, <laughs> would an RE20 mic be better? For some, this one's from Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> he's on crack. Um, would an RE20 mic be better for someone with excessive mouth noise than a large diaphragm condenser or a 416? And would it pick up less ambient noise like a dog barking in traffic? Well. It's a good mic, actually. I, if you're on the radio. Yeah. It's a good mic. Actually, just recently, somebody sent me a sample recorded with an RE20, and I expected it to be noisy and hissy, and it wasn't. And I was rather surprised. I think it was plugged right into a Scarlet, and uh, it was clean, and uh, I was rather shocked. Yeah. So would I still choose it over other mics? The thing is, gain is gain. Whether the mic is sensitive or whether the mic is weak, once you turn up the gain to pick up the level of volume of audio the noise floor is going to come up too. Um, and the only way an RE20 is going to be more directional or pick up less noise is if you eat the microphone. 
Right. And if you really get up on the RE20, it's definitely going to reject a lot more background noise. But right. So will your condenser mic. Right. So I don't know. I don't think you're going to... It's an instant mouth noise fixing tool. No, because you've got to But it will be a little bit less. Noise. Yeah. And really, it does, it does seem to need a little more gain, which is why our friend Roger Cloud... Loves the RE20s, you know, for podcasters because he sold a lot of cloud lifters for those. You know, it's an, an additional little amplification in the RE20. It, it really is designed to be a very close mic, but we don't talk to people an inch from their eardrums. So it doesn't sound wholly natural. And we're trying to sound as natural as possible. So, you know, 416 might be better to keep exterior noise out than, say, an RE20. You know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, J. Horace Black. Oh wait, wait. Say no. Uh, Nicholas Clemens has an interesting well, that's question. Lots of Should the mic be uh, inverted or not? So, like, I guess he's talking about one of these guys, like a large diaphragm, like the way I have side address this mic one here. Right. Yeah. We like inverted because that means the mic can be elevated out of the view of your script, so it doesn't, ob ob uh, you know, obstruct your view. Right. And when it's like this. When it's down below, you get more plosives, it sounds muddier, and it's in the way. It's physically right. in your face. It's in the way. So that's why we we like this inverted position we talk about yeah. ad nauseum. Yeah. It really it you know, it's a visual thing. You know, when I'm talking to people, it's there's a number of factors to it. Number one, it should be at you know, at, at eye level, because by the way, that's the same level as your ears. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking very naturally to somebody. This thing is designed to hear like an ear. So if you've got it upside down like this and you're talking underneath it, you know, people don't understand that the pickup pattern is not a flat plane. It's literally a hemisphere that surrounds the front of the mic. Mm -hmm. So you can talk underneath it. You can talk to the side of it. You can talk to this side. You can talk into the middle. And it will still pick you up properly as long as you're talking directly in the direction of the mic. A lot of people like to talk about being slightly off access and stuff like that to prevent mouth noise. But the reason I like doing it this way is because it's hearing me the way other people hear me. I can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers and there's no plosives. So you don't have this big black screen in front of you that reminds you that you're on a microphone. And God, we hear that all the time. It's like, yeah, you're pushing it a little bit much. And the more louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. So that's why, you know, I mean, you can have the mic any way you want. I mean, you could literally have it sideways as long as you're talking underneath it and it's not blocking your view of the copy. Uh, here's another way I explain it to people, because you and I have probably been working with a lot of actors lately. You know, people mm -hmm. who are just getting into voiceover or they're, they've been doing they're, it for a while. Actors, but they don't do studio work. They're not studio actors. Yeah. Right, right. Or, they, or they're, they're, they're actors that have done a lot of studio work and now trying to get into voiceover. Right. I ask them the same question. When you're doing a scene, do you play to the scene or do you play to the camera? Oh, I play to the scene. Same thing in voiceover. Forget the microphone is there. Get it out of your field of vision, but it's still picking you up the way it's supposed to. And you've got your copy right here. You're more into your acting and less into being on a microphone. That's why I like having it up. We spent a lot of time on this because it is so damn important, everybody. It's basic, basic, basic. So important. Yeah. Uh, man, we're running on time. Should we try to fly through all these? Damn? Well, let's let's, let's let's let's. We already talked about the four sixteen, and uh, let's see here. Here's one from Chile. From Nikki yeah. Flo. Hey, from Chile, guys. What's the main difference of using USB mic and one with all the extra complication? Well, okay. <laughs> That's an easy one. Go for it. Well, I mean, uh, most of the USB mics, they, 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 uh, they short you on at least some feature. Like, they don't have a proper gain control. Or they don't have a good way to control your monitoring. Or they don't have a very good preamp, so the noise they're a little bit noisier. That's a common problem. And the ones that I've used that are really good don't have a gain control, and that's inconvenient. They most every one of them fall miss of some feature or another. Um, the Yeti is pretty well known, and 
that does pretty much have all those features, but it's a tank. It is a beast. It is a heavy, monstrous microphone, and so therefore not so convenient to use. So every one of them has some little annoyance that makes them not work like a professional mic. And, um, you know, that's, that's my main issue. But can you record in book gigs and get paid using a USB mic? Yeah. Just not a yeah, $35 one. Maybe not a thirty-five dollar one, but uh, you know, there's some three, two to three hundred dollar ones out there that are rather usable. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, it's just USB mics tend to be a lot noisier and stuff, and those extra complications are still in that mic anyway because you, you know, like the Yeti has its own uh, volume, you know, level control on it. You know, otherwise right. you're relying on the computer to do it. Not the most efficient way to get your proper levels. And I'll go back to the thing I said earlier that the clients these days are more and more becoming more picky about what equipment you're using. I don't know if that matters across the board. Or I don't know if it's all markets and all countries, but you know, it doesn't speak to your professionalism if your only mic is a USB mic, unfortunately. Right. So it'd be like a photographer showing up with an iPhone, knowing that an iPhone can take a damn good photo, but you're getting paid as a photographer you should probably show up with a better camera. Kind of an analogy that might work there. Okay. We got time for like two more of these questions, and these All are right. interesting ones. This one from Rob Rader. Uh, I have a 10 year old MacBook and Mac Pro that has been upgraded with a solid state drive and 32 gigabytes. I talk for a living. And 32 gigabytes of RAM as my main studio recorder. That works great. Holy but, cow. 10 years old and it'll run 32 gigs of RAM. That's well, amazing. It is. <laughs> but because of some Mac apps, I need to upgrade my two-year-old MacBook Air to Catalina. Okay. It's not a kind of irrelevant to the actual question. Which, so which I want to school or carrier lunch. Right. Will my old original Epigee 1 work with it if I upgrade? I don't see why not. The original Apogee One, will it work if it's been upgraded to Catalina? That's a great question for Apogee. <laughs> Head over to Apogee's website and they will have that information. Yeah, just around the, the corner from you now. Compatibility in guide, yeah. yeah. Yeah, check out the app compatibility yeah. guide. I, I, no I, I guess, the, the, I, you know, if you've got, a, you've got an Apogee One, you know, I think it's, you, it's in a drawer. You know, gr grab it and check it out. And next week we'll see if it, you know, it still works with Catalina. You're I giving don't... me homework? What? <laughs> I'm giving, giving you homework. homework. You're giving me homework over here? And you've got to read chapter two and answer questions one through five. I so miss <laughs> being a social studies teacher. Uh, let's get one last one in. What do you think? Yeah, let's go for it. Mark Boyer says, hey, guys, I have a very newbie question here. Okay. How in the heck do I boost audio correctly? I recorded about minus 18 to minus 12 dB peaks, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. But I need to get it to ACX standards to say minus 3.2 dB peak, I'm assuming. I'm uh, asking this because I'm getting mixed answers about normalizing and that I should not use normalize. And then there's the whole compression thing and then limiters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to nail down a process. That process includes clean sound without fiddling around too much. At the moment, I'm using Reaper, which I have set up for voiceover, just like Mike Delgadio. Both junky, yeah. So you're, I'm going to give a really short answer, Dan, and it's a plug. I hate to say it. That's okay. Hire me, and I will set you up the proper workflow to achieve that stuff in Reaper. I have a specific sequence of, of way to do it. I, have, I set everything in that effects chain with all those mysterious functions for you. In other words, I make the sausage, you cook it. That's what, that's the point. Yeah. You want to go learn and make sausage. That's a whole different yeah. thing. You got to go to Chef sausage. And do that. Yeah. I'll make it for you. You cook it. That's what I do at georgethetech.com. Look at the audiobook mastering service. And that's honestly, I, we don't even have the time and the scope to go over what you have to learn how to do that. That would be a whole like two hours show right there. Right. And it's a but, lot. Yeah. We've been doing this though. I mean, we know how. We know what it's supposed to sound like. And yeah, I mean, uh, not, I'll make sure it doesn't just meet the spec. That's not hard. I mean, it's not hard to destroy the audio so it fits the spec. I'll make sure it still sounds really good and also right. fits the spec. So, yeah. and I say, keep it clean, and then therefore, you know, you normalize it. Really, shouldn't do anything. 
So yeah, and that's added part of the workflow. But that's again, it's a workflow, right? It's a process. Yeah. Okay. Well, lots of great questions there. Yeah, that was awesome. Off the cuff. See, we know the answers except for the one about Epigee, but we have to got to go do your homework now. And I'll be expecting a three-page report. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> First, I got to find that thing. You understand? My office right now, the wall, the, the the closet is full of boxes that say "office bookshelf" attached to the box, because the bookshelf is on the floor because the feet are right here. But I'm missing one of the feet with the springs and the thing and the ah, so I can't unpack everything. Once I can find everything and unpack everything. I'm happy to do a test with my 10-year-old Apogee 1. All righty. And with that, that concludes this section of Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk number 43. George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. Hello. Welcome to Voice Over Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. You know, I used to live in Buffalo, New York. But now I'm in sunny Southern California. But no matter where you are, when you need equipment strictly for voiceover, there's only one place to go. And that's voiceoveressentials.com. And right now is the time to get with Harlan Hogan's Signature Series V01A voiceover microphone. They also have the fabulous Centrance MicPort Pro 2 with limiter in stock. In fact, it's the only version they sell. Now, a limiter is a must-have, especially when recording oneself with no engineer to ride gain for you. By the way, it's the most amazing limiter they've encountered. It's impossible to detect, and it's incredibly quiet. And they've upgraded the Portabooth Pro Quick Script LED light. Now it has two goosenecks, all the better to read your script. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now to get these great VoiceOver Essential products. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Our finally spent, if you're a voice actor, because hopefully we gave you the information you needed, off the cuff. You know. But we know there are people out there that really appreciate this. And they do so by donating to our cause here and making sure that our technology is up to date. And who are those people this week? Yeah, we've got donations from uh, Michael Kearns, Graham Spicer, Larry Hudson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks for You, 
and Antland Productions. And you've probably heard me say those names countless times because they're, I believe they're all subscribers. Yep. And they just send a little bit of money automatically on PayPal every month and uh, keeps their name right on the show. Pretty smart idea, I'd say. Can't beat um, that. Do it for the name call out and do it just to show your support, whatever the case is. So um, you don't have to subscribe either. You can just do a single donation for one thing right. if you found something was really helpful. And if I don't know, if you didn't find something helpful tonight, then you weren't listening. Um, yeah. Or we, you're a know it all. That's true. We also need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman doing a great job in the chat room tonight. Thanks, I think he's, he's starting to get it down to where we get lots Except of Except for that one crazy question. Yeah. Well, I'd like to know where that one comes from. That? Did we get hacked? I, 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 no I don't know. Some, somebody, you know, why did that end up in there? I wanted to joke. see if we were paying attention. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, Hat Merlino was doing our tech tonight, the son of did Sue Merlino, right. and did a great did job. Of course, Sue set the whole thing up for him, and he's like, doop, doop. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it, it makes makes it easy. But Hat, Pat, thanks a whole lot for doing exactly. what you do. Uh, and, uh, and Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well... Hopefully we filled your ears enough with uh, enough tech for one week. Next week we got another great guest. I got a couple of people lined up. This is going to be fabulous. So let's take it home. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Hey, remember, if it sounds good. It is good. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. 43 is in the can. Whoa.